time is wasting away. Hey everyone. So we'll get started. Um, this is the web design session for shelter in place coding. So just a quick recap, our, our instructors are uh, Caitlin and Shivam, who taught Java and Python uh, earlier this week on Monday and Tuesday. And then uh, my name is Rishab. I'm a computer science graduate from UCLA. I'll be teaching the web design section, which is every Wednesday. And then uh, Amit will be teaching the uh, entrepreneurship uh, bootcamp section. So uh, just a reminder that we have uh, a hackathon. It'll be on June 14th uh, to 15th uh, for Silicon Valley District 18. And it's not too late to uh, join the startup teams. Uh, try to form a, a team with your friends and we'll have a pitch fest where you guys can pitch your ideas on June 20th um, from three to 5 p.m. And uh, just a reminder that if you guys uh, are pretty confident with your coding skills and you wanna be an instructor, uh, we definitely could use some help answering questions and, and uh, teaching future sessions. So uh, feel free to reach out to us if you're interested in that and uh, we'll, we'll have a future 10 week program. I have a question. Yeah. How many people do you need for the um, Pitch Fest team? Um, Shivam, do you have an answer for that? Um, yeah. <clears throat> I, I can answer that. So there's two, two to four members per team is what is recommended. Uh, so about me four, and my it, brother can do it? Yeah, you and your brother can do it or you can okay. even get another friend. So yeah, up to four people is good. Uh, if you have more than that, then it becomes too big. So we recommend two to four. Okay. Uh, how about alone? Is that okay? Uh, we don't recommend that, but um, you know, if Worst case, yes, alone will be fine, but we do, you know, you, you probably, it's, it's always good to do teamwork and show your collaboration. So that's why it's always good to do it with someone. No, I'm, I'm just asking because um, I don't go to a school around here, so I don't have anybody that I know. Okay, we can, you can bring it up in Amit Shade's uh, session tomorrow and he can help you probably hook you up with someone else so you can form a team with them. Cool. Um, so just a reminder that all of our class information will be on the tiny URL uh, link in this slide, tinyurl.com slash shelter coding. So that has everything, Slack, uh, Zoom, homework, uh, any information you need to know about the class. Um, and a reminder that homework is not graded, so it's optional and it'll be given after each week's lesson. Um, ask, ask in Slack any questions that you have uh, about the homework or anything in general about the class and uh, all the setup information will be there too. Um, and, and again, during this class, uh, try to only use the chat if you have a question and not uh, send anything else uh, to the chat that's unnecessary. <clears throat> and uh, try to take a screenshot of this so that we can, uh, so you have all the information. So this, this, uh, yeah. Um, how do you sign up for the pitch fest, like teams? We, we um, will provide that information about pitch fest later. So you will, you will be receiving some more information. Okay. So today's class will be, uh, introing web design, uh, to create websites, you'll need HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So those are the, the core, uh, uh, languages that we'll use um, to kind of uh, build websites. Uh, HTML is definitely the most basic building block of the web. And then uh, we have CSS, which allows us to actually uh, design our pages and describe how the pages will look and uh, how they appear to users. And then JavaScript is what allows us to define more complex functionality and behavior um, on the page. So uh, let's get into it. So 
first, um, I'll do a quick uh, preview of what we'll do in this class. So one, one of the things we'll be able to do is uh, uh, be able to build our own website. So uh, this is a quick uh, website that I made. It has an about section and we can write some stuff about ourselves, picture and a short description. And then um, we can scroll down to and uh, we can have like a list of activities or something that we've done. Um, we'll also do a quick uh, tic-tac-toe application so you can see how we can even use uh, web design to create games. Um, so we can do this and then it says the winner is X. Um, and then we'll, we'll also look at uh, doing a to-do list. So you can say, I have to do homework, um, water the plants, and do groceries. And then uh, once you have those, then you're allowed to mark them as done and, and remove them from the list too. So those are some of the applications we'll build during this uh, course. and. And we'll learn how to do that with uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So, any questions? Cool. So to get started, we'll uh, we'll use Sublime Text. Uh, don't worry if you guys don't have everything downloaded and can't follow along, but um, we'll. Uh, we will use Sublime Text and we'll use our browser. That's all you need for this uh, for um, web design right now. So I have a question. Yeah. How did you get Sublime Text? Oh. Um, so we have the we have the link in uh, the tiny URL uh, doc, oh. but it's uh, basically you'll just have to go to um, sublimetext.com and you'll have a download here, and then you can download it for your. Uh, operating system, depending on if you have a Mac or Windows. Cool, so what I'm gonna do is uh, save this um, file and just call it index.html. So um, this way, the when I uh, load this file into the browser, where it's gonna be, uh, the, the browser is gonna know that it's an HTML file and that, that'll allow it to parse uh, it as HTML. So I saved it to my desktop. So what we can do actually is click here and say uh, open with Chrome. So cool. So we have our uh, file. This is the path to my file. And uh, all you have to do is right click and say open with Chrome. So now we have a blank page. That's cool. So the first thing that you have to do uh, when you're writing a um, HTML document is define the uh, doc type. So we're gonna say doc type HTML. So that'll tell um, the browser that this is an HTML file and that's how, that's how we need to read it. And if, you, if we go back to this uh, page and refresh it, you'll see that it doesn't actually show up on the page. It's just a uh, way for the browser to know what, what the type of the page is. Oh yeah, uh, we'll make it bigger. Um, do we have any questions right now? How did you um, make it Chrome again? Um, so you just find the file uh, wherever you want to save it. If it, even if it's in a folder or wherever it is, right click on it um, and then say right open with. On it. Um, and then it it'll allow you to say Chrome or Safari or whatever you want to open it in. So I'll open it in Chrome and then it pops up right here. Oh. Can you download it if you have a Chromebook? Sorry, what was that? Can you download it if you have a Chromebook, like Sublime? Yeah, yeah, you should be able to download it, I believe. Um, I, I'm not too familiar with Chromebooks, but you, you can actually use any text editor you want um, to, to edit these HTML files. So it, it doesn't matter whether you're using Sublime or you can even use a simple uh, text editor, like Mac has text edit, um, or you can use the more complex text editors like IntelliJ that, um, that we sent a tutorial on how to download. And last question. Yeah. Um, how did you get that tiny file thing again? How did we get the tiny file? 
Yeah, how to open it with Chrome. Yeah, yeah. So you can just save a file uh, wherever you want. So let's say I had like a, a folder right here and then I can just, uh, I don't know how to see. Can basically, basically just copy any file that you have. So I can just have a file right here and then rename it to uh, make sure it ha ends with HTML. And then that way the, uh, the browser knows that it's an HTML file. And then when you open it, you'll have the option to uh, click it, click Chrome. And then that way it'll open up in Google Chrome and it'll read the file as a, uh, as an HTML file in the, in the browser. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. So now we've told the file, told the browser that this is an HTML file. Um, next thing that every HTML file will have is uh, HTML tags. So this is the core uh, way we can write HTML. And um, we, we, we use tags to basically define anything that we're, we're writing. So HTML is just the basic uh, tags that we have to surround our, our document in. And again, this will, this will not uh, change anything on the page. So if I refresh, um, everything is still blank. And then um, after that, we can define a um, header. So this is, this is a code that actually will also not be visible on the page but it is used by the browser in certain ways. So we'll see that next. So we can define a title and in the title, we'll just say uh, my web page. Um, so now if I save this file and uh, refresh here, so now we can see this is where the um, title is set. It's actually on the tab in your browser and it'll say my web page right there. So that's, that's how you define that. Um, it's in the header. Um, so next, we can start adding things to our page. Okay, looks like someone uh, wants me to slow down. Do we have any questions on that? Yeah, so we don't need semicolons um, in HTML. The, the main way uh, the browser can read that this is the end of the title is that we have the slash here. So we do, um, it's always a, um, this character and then this character to end that first tag. And then we'll have the same characters, except um, we'll have a slash right here before the end of it. So we'll see how we use that um, more, but that's basically how we do it everywhere. Um, the exclamation point is only used in, the, in, the, in this first doc type. Uh, so you don't have to worry much about that. We're just yeah. going to add that to every file and that's it. Sorry. Yeah. What was that? Me. Yeah. A quick question. How can you repeat? How do I get to this uh, files um, where you are showing the changes? Yeah. So uh, once you have a file created, all, all you can, all you have to do is uh, you can say, open it with sublime text if you have that downloaded, or I can open it with text editor. And, and how do you download the file? Like, um, can you, uh, you don't need to download. You don't need to download any file. Uh, this is just an empty file and you'll name it index.html. So that's all that matters uh, for the browser to be able to read it. And then uh, if you click open with Chrome, the Chrome will start reading that file. And then all you have to do to make changes is uh, type in this file and then save it. No. So how do I create that, that file? Uh, you just make a new file on your computer. So um, you can, you can you can just uh, copy an existing file. So I have like uh, random files on my computer, and then you can rename it to uh, index.html. As long as it ends in .html, then um, you'll the browser will know it's an HTML file. Cool. Um, so. Next, uh, we'll, we'll start uh, adding content to our page. So this is in the body tags. So Wait, here you can, uh, yeah, do you have a question? Yeah, um, so I have text edit on my MacBook. Do I need sublime text or can I just use any text edit? So text edit will work. 
uh, or Notepad++ or anything. But the thing with that is, um, is it might not uh, highlight these, uh, uh, the nodes, the like the tags right here, HTML and, and head and title. Uh, and it might not look as good, but you'll still be able to edit it and, and make changes as you want. And uh, how do you run the code on text edit or something? Uh, so it's the same thing. You just find the file on your desktop or wherever it is and you, you right click it and open it in Chrome. That's the that's all you need to do uh, in order to run HTML files and, and see your changes. Okay. So don't Thank worry you. too much about. Yeah. So just in general, uh, you guys don't need to follow along and and uh, write all this down with me. I'll send out a tutorial after that allow you to uh, to like actually uh, do this yourself and and uh, show it on your computer. Um, I have a quick question. Yeah. So will we learn about like the paragraph tags and the attributes and everything that you need to put in the body? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm getting to right now. Oh. So uh, we created our body. So, so as you can see, our uh, page is still empty. So now let's do our first uh, tag that will actually show up on the page. So we can use the H1 tag and just say, hello world. Um, this is kind of what we do in every language as our first, uh, first thing. So now I refresh this page and cool. So we got hello world. Um, it's on the left side of the page, which is the default uh, alignment for any text. And uh, yeah, so we have this. And then uh, this is the, like, the, the biggest header tag. So H stands for header. And then uh, one says that is it, it's the biggest. So now if we make it H2, um, we can see that this actually gets a little smaller. And then we can even do H3, H4. I'll do H5 and we'll see that it's like really small. So uh, you can kind of size your header based on that. And it'll be by default, it'll be bold text as you can see. Um, so he said, how did hello world get there? I'm confused. So just by typing in hello world here, and as long as it's in the body, um, it'll show up on our browser when we refresh the page. So that's all you have to do. And you don't have to compile the code or anything like Java. And how'd you get on the browser? Um, so you, you just have to find the file on your computer and then, and then right click and open with uh, Google Chrome. Sometimes you can even just double click the file and it'll automatically uh, open up in your browser. Um, cool. So we have our hello world. Um, so now uh, what we'll do is we'll create some images. So yeah, there is no age zero. So, um, so actually before this, we will add some images onto our page. So this is the default mm -hmm. way of uh, creating an image. So IMG uh, is what an image tag is. So that'll say that we want an image to be displayed on our page. And then source is the, the URL of that image. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna, uh, I have a site that has, that displays random images. So if I, if you go to, don't worry about this, I'll, I'll send in the tutorial, but source.unsplash.com slash random um, will give you a random image. So if I, if I uh, refresh this, it'll, it'll uh, keep giving me different images. And we'll use this to uh, display it on our page. And then after slash random, you can actually uh, write the dimensions of the image. So the can browser type, is essential. Can, can you type like the um, URL in the chat? Yeah, sure. So source means that's where the URL of the image is. So all you have to do is uh, find any image that you have and find it in the browser, copy the URL and put it in source. And then, so we have this one. Um, when we go to this image, it shows this. So uh, we, when we put it here, oh, oops.
So wait, what do you put after source? There's that little... This slash? Yeah, so so after source, we put uh, quotes to say that, to, to put our URL in, and then we'll have this slash and the uh, this end tag at the end so to turn our browser the full image tag. Um, so now we'll, we'll, we'll refresh our page and there we have our image. Um, and since it's a random image, it'll change every time I refresh uh, my page. So yeah. And then 800, uh, 400 is actually the dimensions, dimensions of the image. So um, this means it's 800 pixels by 400 pixels, uh, height and width. And, and this, this basically allows us to define how big our, the image we want. Um, so do we have any questions about this? Uh, I still don't get how to like run it on the browser. It's like not letting me. Um, are you, are you on a Mac? Yeah. So you should be able to just, uh, open it in your, so here, this is, so I have my browser right here. Um, you can just go to any page you want. So I'm going to go to Google. And then if you have this file on your desktop, another thing you can do is actually just drag it on and you see how there's a little plus uh, icon next to the file. And then yeah. once you let go, um, it'll show up on your, on your browser. So oh. I'll, I'll send a tutorial out for this, but it should be as simple as doing that. Or, um, you can say open with Google Chrome. Or um, okay. you can actually just double click. If you double click the file, it'll also work. Oh, okay, thank you. Also, whenever I do it, it pops up a command. It pops up, and it's, it's not an error, but it's like, just shows like a little image, like one of those pages, I guess. Or uh, let me see, what is it actually? It's like a picture of a cloud in the s and sky. Yeah, so, uh, um, okay, it's hard for me to tell uh, what exactly you're looking at, but if you guys could uh, just try to follow along for this class and that way you can learn what the dim different tags are, like images and uh, header tags. And then after afterwards, I'll send out a tutorial and if you guys are still having problems, uh, we can you can ask questions in the Slack and we'll, we'll answer there. Um, also, I see a lot of you guys are messaging me privately. I won't be able to teach the class and answer all these questions um, at the same time. So if you could try to send them to the chat with everyone, uh, then Shivam uh, will be answering the questions. Appa? Okay, we so can't it looks like the everybody. chat with everyone was, yeah, it looks like it was turned off. So that's okay. So I, I'd say just try to follow along as best as you can um, with, with what I'm doing and then afterwards you, we can start asking questions in, in the Slack. Um, cool, so now we can uh, add some more images to our page. So 800 times 400 is one, but let's say we want a smaller image. Um, so we can do 400 by 200. Um, so now we can see how this is about, um, only 400 by 200 pixels. So this is this is how we can get a smaller image on the page. And Wait, how I can even... Excuse me? Yeah. Um, isn't it also possible that outside of the image tag, you can add the width and height attribute as well? Yeah, um, I'll get to that. Okay. Um, so yeah, so here, so now we have a few images on our page. Let me just copy all of these a few times. Um, so now, now we can see we have like a two, two bigger images, two smaller images, and two even smaller images. Um, and th they're random, so every time I refresh the page, so it'll come from this URL. Um, so we have that. But uh, so yeah, so let's, let's actually style our page because um, it obviously doesn't look very good. So one way we can do this is actually add um, style tags. So let's add a style here. Um, and then, so to style, one thing we'll do is actually learn text align center. So body tells, so 
any tag that you have on the on the page body h1 uh, image img you can actually define uh, a style for it so this is this is a css anything between style tags is is called css that's what allows us to um, design our page and make it look how we want it to look so body is um, we'll, we'll want to do one thing which is text align center so that that allows us to say any text on the page uh, let's move it to the center of the page so now if I refresh um, the images are still loading but the text is now in the center as you can see and uh, another thing you can do and so so to, to expand on this, you can also say text line right, um, and then it'll move to the right, or you can do text line left, which is the default, and it'll go back to the left. So um, those are the ways you can use text line, the text line property. Oh, it in centers the images. And in CSS, yeah, it actually centers all content on the page. So it says text align, but it'll actually center all content. Oh, uh, excuse me. Yeah. How do you get the um, the user's desktop index website? Um, I'll send out a tutorial for that, and and you guys can uh, answer, ask questions in Slack. But for this for this class, let's just try to follow along with what I'm doing so that uh, you can okay. learn how to write. I just joined too. at like five twenty because I got a bit late with something else. Oh yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, feel free to ask in Slack uh, afterwards. Excuse me. Yeah. Is there a way to uh, determine the amount of pixels by uh, other than inspecting the element? Uh, no, inspecting the element is the right way. I won't get into that for this class just because uh, I don't want to overcomplicate things. Um, cool, so we have a text align. So the other thing uh, we can see on our page is that the um, the background is just white and looks kind of bland. So let's uh, change the background color. So we have the background color property and um, we'll do green. So now we can see that our background is green. We can basically change this to any color we want. Uh, blue, red, and it'll all work. Do tan for now. So we have this. So cool, that looks a little better. Our text is centered. We have a nice background, um, but our images are still all different sizes. So let's see what we can do to fix that. So uh, one thing we can do is say for our images, let's make them all 100% um, of, the, of uh, their container, which in this case is body. So the body is basically the entire page. Um, so if I say height, so for, for images, we can define a height and a width. So I'll say height 100% and width 100%. So now we can at least see that all of our images are the, the same height and width. Um, and they take up the entire page because that's how we defined it. Um, but obviously this doesn't look very good. If this is an actual web page, you wouldn't want to have to scroll down to see just five images. So the next thing we can do actually is set a, a max width um, and a max height. So if we set a max width, um, and since we have like 800, 400, 200, I'll just use the middle one as like a nice uh, middle ground. So I'll say max width is 400 pixels. So we'll use PX um, to, for pixels. And then similarly, I'll do a max height of 200 pixels. Um, so now this tells our page that we should um, make every image, no matter what, based on this image tag right here, see um, that, that, that it should always be 400 pixels wide and 200 pixels uh, tall. And then that basically allows all of our images to be the same height. Cool, so obviously it's kind of hard to tell like where these images start and end because they're so close together. So the next thing we'll do actually is add some padding. Um, so padding allows us to say, add extra space on the outside of our image. So I'll do 20 pixels for now, which isn't a lot, but um, as we can see, it adds a little space now between the images so that 
uh, the images are like easier to see and see where they start and end. Um, cool. So excuse me, I have a question. Yeah. So like in the initial um, six image tags that were already in the body, like right next to those image tags, could you not add the height and width attribute? Like it doesn't necessarily have to be in the style. Yeah, you can. Um, but I think for web design, a better practice is to actually have your CSS defined separately so that it's easier to read um, and mm -hmm. you kind of have it all contained in one place. Um, but yeah, that's definitely an option. Oh, okay, okay. Isn't height measured in pixels as well? Yep, yeah. So everything, everything here is uh, pixels, but alternatively, you can use a percentage um, to say like, 100% of the page or 50% of the page. Um, cool, so we have this um, and our, our images are nicely spaced. So uh, the next thing we'll do actually is get into a little JavaScript. So, so one thing uh, we can do actually is use the P tag. So a P tag just says, um, that it's a paragraph. So I can write anything here. So I'll say today's date. Um, so same thing, we create uh, the start tag and the end tag, and we can write any text we want. And as you can see, it's not a header. It's not a H1 or anything thing. So the text comes um, pretty small and it's not bold, which is fine. That's what we want. Um, and then and then I'll add another tag and I'll give it an ID. So an ID is just a unique identifier for this tag. Um, and what it does is it, is it allows us to actually uh, find this tag on the page. Um, and we're guaranteed that it's unique because no two elements can have the same ID. So uh, let's see how we can use this. So we're gonna add um, script tags now. So script tags are uh, what, how we can write a JavaScript. So let me actually pause and see if anyone has any questions right now. So, the so ID I... wait uh, for the image. Uh, Google images don't work when I try to put them into my code, uh, like those links, but. Uh, the random image URL you gave, uh, that works. Yeah, so for Google Images, um, let's see what we can do. All right, let's just search house. I believe then, you need to copy the address, the link address. Yeah, so if you copy the link address right here, um, we'll see if that works. It may or may not work, yeah. so. Um, that didn't work, but if you actually copy the image address right here, so that's a separate thing, then it'll work. So you'll make sure make sure you click this one instead. Um, so if I do that, there we go. Now we have our house. So yeah. Any other questions? Um. Wait, so uh, when I drag the. Um. Yeah. So, so when I drag the file from my desktop onto the Google browser, it just uh, shows the code. It doesn't actually show, it doesn't like run the code. Uh, yeah. Make sure your file is ends in HTML. Does it, does it end with the dot .html? Name? Yeah, the file name. Okay, okay. What oh, does the um, what does the ID and all that mean? Yeah, so I'll get to that right now. Um, I have a question. So yeah. Uh, so where exactly do you get this link? Could you just show it to us like now, or is there any way? Where, where do we, where exactly do I get what? Sorry. Where do you get like the website link? Yeah. Oh, um, this image link right here. Mm -hmm. uh, I just found it oh, okay. online, but you can really, f you can find any image that you want No, 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 uh, like the tab where online. you have all the images and it says hello world on your, uh, Oh, this, on your, this link yeah, right Google here. Browser. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this this is auto populated by my Mac when I when I open this file. So if I like, so I'll close this right now. Um, and so now I'm on a different page. Now, if I double click this, you can see it just automatically popped up with this uh, path. So th this is just a path to my file on my desktop. So you can see how it's uh, slash desktop slash index.html. Oops. Yeah. Cool. So let me uh, start using some JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. What's, your What's the symbol next to date on the ID date? Um, oh, this, this right here? The symbol on the other side, the white one. Uh, this one? No, the one next to that. Right here? Yeah. Yeah, so that's just how we can say that that's the end of the tag. So we do that everywhere um, for H12. We say uh, we start this tag, we end this tag, and then uh, we start it here and end it here. So you have to have that um, on every tag. But if you want to define an ID or uh, a property on this tag, then you just put it in right before the end, end of the tag. So that's why I put the ID here um, so that it knows that this ID is associated with this P tag. Cool, so um, here we'll, we'll get to some JavaScript. So don't worry about uh, the, all, all of this too much. It's just, uh, we'll learn it as we go, but this is basically how we can um, find an ID on the page that we just defined. So get element by ID um, allows us to actually find this date, date tag. So by saying ID, it knows, it looks for, it goes through our entire um, HTML and we'll say, okay, where do we have a tag that says date? Um, so this is JavaScript and this is, this is how we write that. So we'll say get um, element by ID date. So that will fetch this element. Now what we can do is say, we want our HTML of this element um, to equal the current date. So I think it's, and then uh, that is used through the inner HTML property. So like I said, don't worry too much about all, all this syntax, but um, this I'm just showing an example of how we can use JavaScript. And then um, we'll say new date dot to date string. So this kind of tells our page um, that we want the current date. So new date just says, get me the current date and convert it to a string, um, which is the to date string function. So this allows us to set the inner HTML, which, which means right here basically, um, when uh, our JavaScript is executed. So now if I go refresh the page, we can see we have our date, current date today um, right here. So that's how you can use some JavaScript. And as long as it's in the um, script tag, then that actually adds our, uh, adds the content to the page. So as long as we have this, it'll execute and it'll say document dot get element by ID inner HTML equals new date. And then it'll add it to this tag. Uh, do we have any questions? Oh uh, yes, I have a question. Yeah. So the in any case, if we ever have like the ID as well as the um, regular tag attribute, the ID will always override the tag, correct? Um, so, so actually each tag, it, you, you won't override the tag. Each tag can have a unique ID. So I could put ID equals today on this one and that's fine, um, but you can't have two IDs. So I can't say ID equals date or whatever. I can't, I can't have another one. So you, uh -huh. you can have one ID on, on every tag on the page. But like, no, what I meant was that like, um, for example, we have the body in the style that says text align center. And if we had an yeah. ID in the same time that said text align right, then the ID would override the um, body text oh. line. Yeah, yeah. So 
uh, the way CSS works is so so the, again style is where the CSS is the way CSS works is it'll uh, kind of go from the top down so if we define um, something on the body then it'll get overridden by anything over here so I'll do that as an example so um, so to, to access an ID you use the the number sign um, hashtag so date and then that says I want this element and then I'll say uh, what's another thing we can do font size um, 24 pixels so now this says or or are you said let's do text line but I'll also go over font size font size text line right right so we have text line center here text line right and that means the date is now overridden to be on the right side of the page. Um, and then, like I was saying, we, we obviously don't want that because it looks kind of weird. But what another thing we can do is um, set the font size. So now our date is a little bigger than the default font size. So if you only get 20, so that, yeah, that looks, maybe that looks a little better. But in this um, case, the ID tag, in this case, the ID tag cannot be put in the body, right? Because it's unique to each element. Yeah, yeah. So you can only put an ID in one on one element. Oh, okay, okay. Um, cool. Yeah. Um. So basically, um, in the style, you put like the brackets, but then you like made it go under. Is that always the case, or could you write in the same line? Uh, wh wh which line are you talking about? Like for the style, like the body part, you put like a parentheses over there and then you put the text oh, line yeah. under it. Yeah. So would yeah. you do that always? So, so yeah, I could, you can do it like this. Um, it, it's just harder to read, obviously. So I think what matter, matters the most is that you have a semicolon um, at the end of each uh, property so that the browser knows, okay, this is the end of the font size property and it's 20 pixels. Otherwise, if you didn't end it, then it would get really confused um, and see it, it didn't work. So now the font size uh, is back to normal um, because now it says, okay, my font size is 20 pixels background color tan, which doesn't make sense to the browser. So if you go back to this now, uh, we can see that works. So all that matters is you have a semicolon um, and you have these brackets uh, after whatever you want to change the, the CSS of. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. In the end, is there any way that you can review all this code? Just like a quick overview? Yeah, I'll do that. Um, I can do that now, actually. Uh, yeah, sure. That would be great. Okay. So um, is there anything specific that you wanted me to go over or I, I can just go over everything? Yeah, more specifically like the, the beginning parts and the text align center and all the uh, yeah. syntax. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll go over the, everything. So, um, so ev on every HTML page, you need to have uh, a start tag HTML and the end tag for HTML. So this tells our browser like this is the information on this page that we need. Um, and then the head header tag, uh, which is just head, um, that basically allows us to define certain properties that are not actually visible to the page, um, but they're just there um, for other things. So for example, in this case, it's to set the title of the page. So here we can see that my web page is set as the title with this title tag. Um, and then we have the body tag. The body tag is where all of our content on the page is. So this is the, the core of the HTML page. And this is where we can display anything on our browser that we want to see. Um, so different types of tags of this are H1, uh, P, and then like I said, we can do H2, which makes it smaller. Um, and it goes all the way to H6, I believe. Um, and we can change this font, the font size of our header so and the then number, you can have yeah sorry so the number after the h is what um makes the size of the text 
Yeah, exactly. So the okay. the bigger the number, the smaller the uh -huh. text. Okay, thank so you. So H1 is the biggest. Yeah. It's like the font size um, now is one. Yeah, exactly. It, it, no, okay, no, sorry. It's you. not font Got size it. one. It, it's not font size one. It's actually like uh, this is the the first the font biggest size header. So the yeah. first, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Um. Yeah. Could you send okay. like a screenshot of all this like code or whatever on the like document, the main document, the tiny URL thing? I think it'll be yeah, on yeah. YouTube. Uh, yeah, it'll be on YouTube, but um, I'll also send a tutorial that that will help you guys do this yourself and create this web page on your own computer. And then also, is there a way to put time like in, like in a date? Uh, to get the time? Yeah. Yeah, there is. Uh, I don't know it off the top of my head, but uh, be be sure to ask that in the Slack channel, and then and then we can answer it there. Okay. Um, I have a question. So you said the title is my web page, um, but where is the title supposed to go? Like the the your... title is just the name of the tab. So if you see oh. it in, in your browser, you can see that uh -huh. um, if you hover over this, uh, I'll here, I'll make it bigger. So this is the, the tab in my browser and it says my web page. So that's oh, exactly okay. what I put on this title. So if I, if I change okay. this to just web page and refresh, then it changes it there. Oh, okay. Okay, thank uh, you. I I have a question. So um, yeah. so the my code is actually like not saving. It just keeps on saying unable to save. Um, permission yeah. denied. Yeah. I actually have the same problem. Um, yeah. Sorry, it's it's hard for me to debug without uh having any other information. So just post that in the Slack channel uh, after the class, and and uh, I'll be sure to help there. I have, like, I have a question. What is a baby? Sorry. I have a question. Yeah. Um, for, for how do you add the date for the page? Yeah, so um, the date can be added <clears throat> through the JavaScript right here at the bottom of the page, at the bottom of this file. So what we'll do, what we'll have to do is say document, um, which basically says access the this entire document, um, this HTML file basically, and then we'll say get element by ID. So that says find find the element um, on the page that has an ID of date. Um, so in in this case, that's this p tag right here, and then uh, set the inner HTML to to the to the date. So here we can see new date dot to date string. That don't worry too much about how that works, but that allows us to get the the current date um, as a nice little string right here, Wednesday, April twenty second, twenty twenty. And then uh, all we want to do is set the HTML of that element to this. So that way, we instead of like having hard code it here and say like April twenty second, and then we have to change our code every day, right? Um, which would be really annoying. But with JavaScript, we can just say this, and then it'll automatically update every day. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. Where can we get um, HTML, JavaScript, and um, CSS? Uh, you don't need to download them, actually. That's the great part about uh, web design, is that your browser comes with it. So your browser is able to read uh, all these three languages, uh, by default, um, so that's why we How have do to I access open our browser in Chrome. Am I uh, the the browser does that for you. So so all your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is written in in this file, and then your browser uh, reads it for you. Oh okay. Oh, uh, excuse me, I have a question. Yeah. Um, how do you um download the Sublime Text Editor that you are using for HTML? It's it's uh it's gonna be in the tiny URL so um it's it's right here but we'll send uh we'll send this this URL to you guys uh, later but so, so this I, is I basically have another, I have a question uh sorry could you finish your question um can you use REPL.it for this too 
Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, I have can, not used I it, but I think you can. Yeah, you can. So you just select the yeah. HTML, CSS, and then okay. uh, you're able to do the same thing right here. Uh, so as you can see, this is exactly what my file looks like with the HTML head body. Okay. Um, but yeah, so you can do the same thing there. Thanks. Excuse me. Yeah. How do you make the file that you like coded everything on? Like, how do you make it? Um, so I, I need to figure that out exactly how, but I mean, basically you just have to create any file on your computer. So like, uh, if you, if you, if you have any, file just rename it so for example I'll I'll take this uh, screenshot that I have on my computer and I'll say uh, test.html and then um, and then you just delete the content of this file and then you can say html um, cool and then uh, I had a question yeah um so uh, we were able to use javascript and update the date every day would we be able to do the same thing with time is there something yeah so uh i, I can post that in the slack after the class i uh i don't want to show everything right now so just want to make sure people can understand the code that we have right here so even though i can't save it on sublime i tried the the same code on REPL. And it actually works just fine, except the images are kind of like big and like it's kind of weird. Yeah, but it's yeah, still so like same way, kind of. Yeah, make sure you have the the CSS. It it, it may not uh, work as you intended if you don't have that. Um, yeah, because I, I started coding in Sublime and then it didn't work. On REPL, if you're using CSS, you need to make sure to on the left next to your code to make go there. You don't like change it to CSS in your text. I don't think. Yeah, there's like yeah, there's another page for it where you can put all your styling settings. Yeah, so I mean, it looks like it worked. My CSS. Um, just make sure you have a style tag. But yeah, like they're saying, uh, another way you can do this. Um, is use the style.css that REPL provides. And um, yeah, you can do that right here. And uh, I think it's just, yeah, I don't know why it's not working, but, oh, and, and then uh, what you'll have to do actually is uh, put your CSS there and then you'll have to say uh, link equals, uh, I think this is style. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm not sure exactly how to use REPL, but uh, basically, You'll have to do, oh, it's right here. I can't see like my date on yeah. the um, screen. I can't see my date. Um, make sure you have the script tag that I wrote right here. Oh, um, can you so copy we'll allow you to the chat? For the, yeah, yeah, I'll send this afterwards uh, in, in the tutorial. Okay, um, so basically, you said that you were gonna post a tutorial. Where will you? Where will we find that? Um, it'll be in the tiny URL. So, like I said at the start of the class, every everything that everything for this class will be um, in the tiny URL link that you guys were sent over email and um, was also in the slides, and that'll have all the information you need. So I'll go over that again so that you guys can take a screenshot. Um, Wait, is the class over? Yeah, it looks like we have run out of time. So um, any other questions you guys can ask on Slack and uh, I'll send over the tutorial um, and I'll post that on this tiny URL link.
These emails don't get sent to me. Where can I check them? Because I've checked my spam and my <laughs> all of the junk. So but they you, might get sent. You to don't have parents. to worry about. Yeah, so make sure you check your spam uh, or your parents' email. But you actually won't have to worry about email from now on, because um, everything for this class will be posted on this tiny URL link. So make sure you can access this link, and then uh, you'll have everything you need for this class. Oh, okay. Uh, could I ask a question? It's about Friday's yeah. class. Uh, how do we get the small groups ready? Is there a um, yeah, so uh, that'll be discussed on tomorrow uh, with in a mids class. Uh, you'll, you'll basically be able to start trying to create your groups and uh, get ready for the pitch fest. Okay, thank you. Oh, so tomorrow we create our startup groups? Uh, yeah, but yeah. you can start creating those groups whenever uh talk to your friends and and uh yeah decide on what well, if you don't know anyone um yeah so th then we can uh discuss that during the class tomorrow um babe, there, is, there, is, it, is, it, is there a class where just i mean wait i have a question yeah um so you know how we make comments in code. Is that the same for HTML as just two slashes to make a comment? I think HTML um, is different, but Java is two slashes and Python's a hashtag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so for HTML, um, this is how you do it. It's like this, um, and then this is a comment. Wait, the so, event that's uh, on okay, the Sorry? Uh, the event that's on June 15th, what's that called? Um, it is the June 15th is just the, the hackathon. Um, it's just called the hackathon. And it, a lot of extra slashes. I mean, not slashes, but like the like carrot type of thing is a lot um, of extra what? Up on the sc screen. Like like um before pictures i mean after pictures oh i see make sure you have a slash right here so the slash tells it that the tag is the end of it, the the end oh yeah uh, the yeah. end of the tag so yeah that's is the class over yeah the class is over okay. bye excuse bye. me cool. bye yeah uh, how bye. do we like how do we put a link on our website? Thank so you, bye. That when you uh, click on the link on the website, it'll take you to the... Bye. Bye. It'll take you to what? Bye. It'll take you to the link if you click on the link you put on your website. How do you do that? Um, sorry, what exactly do you mean? Are you talking about this image link? Oh, uh, no. So, like, on your website, like, uh, let's just say, like, website to the other website and then that way when you uh, oh yeah link you put, how would you do that yeah so uh i can go over that really quick but that might be something we want to do in the next class so um you can use the um a tag so a is for links and uh and so i want to do google uh, so now we can see that this link shows up and it, and we, it shows up with any text that was between the A tags and it uses this property called href to the link that you want. So now if I click this, um, it takes me to Google. Um, I have a question. Yeah. How do you put an image from Google on the repo again? Um, so, so. It, let's say you have a Google image. All you have to do is copy the image address. Um, just right click on the image, click copy image address, and then uh, put that in right here for the source. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, I also have a question. Um, yeah. I don't fully understand the connection between the, when, 
when you're doing HTML at the top and you're doing the ID equals the date, and then what's the connection with that and when you're writing in JavaScript at the bottom where you were like type equals text? I, I, I didn't understand all that. Yeah, so the biggest thing you have to know about this is that uh, we look on the document for get element by ID of date. Um, so that basically allows us to access this same element. That's the connection is just this ID. And by saying get element by ID um, and then passing in the same date, then that works. But let's say if I change this to uh, something else, then it's, it's not going to work because it won't find that element. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so I'm, I'm going to end class uh, for now and feel, feel free to ask any other questions uh, over Slack. Okay, thank you. Thanks.